Hi, I'm Matt Bardo, and I'm here to try and explain a little bit about what numbers do. And the reason I'm doing this is to try and help explain why something called imaginary numbers really aren't so imaginary after all. So to do that, I think we have to really talk about uh, what numbers are. And it's hard to say what a number is. It you can be so many different things. Um, so I'm going to keep it in the context of math and just talk about what numbers do. So to do that, I need you to imagine uh, a number line going this way. All right, so this is going to be 1. This is going to be negative 1. There we go. So again, 1, negative 1. And now we're going to talk about what plus 1 does. What does plus 1 do? If I add 1 to every number on my number line, what happens? It all, They all go boom. They all get a little bit bigger. All right, so I bring it back. Again, I got 1. I've got negative 1. And now we're going to talk about what minus 1 does. And it's not so hard. We're going to subtract 1 from every number. And we move back. Ding! And everything's smaller. Not too surprising. So shifting, moving left and right, is something that numbers can demonstrate and show. Uh, let's talk about multiplication. Let's talk about uh, multiplying by 1 is not so interesting. So let's uh, do multiplying by 2. So again, uh, I've got 1, I've got uh, negative 1, and I'm going to multiply those numbers by 2. I'm going to multiply all the numbers by 2. 0 is going to stay very still, and when you it moves out. It moves right on out. It expands. Uh, when you multiply things, it get they get bigger. Uh, it's uh, always a uh, uh, you know it's not always true, but we uh, something we certainly feel. So uh, let's uh, talk about dividing by two or multiplying by one half. So here I've got uh, one, and here I've got negative one. And now we're going to multiply by one half. Everything got smaller except for zero, which stayed absolutely still. So those are. Uh, that's as a teacher that's something that I find surprisingly students don't have a great idea about and don't have a great understanding of and I think uh, these are students uh, that I teach who are in high school and they don't they don't met, they don't understand that they don't know that very well they don't picture that very well so I think it's incumbent upon us as teachers to spread the word about those things and make sure that our students have a better understanding about what numbers do and I find that it's very helpful in the following. So I'm going to try and motivate a little bit about what I is uh, through the same kind of demonstration. So let's go back to our number line. So uh, we're going to have our number line again. And here we've got, uh, this is 1, this is negative 1. All these things are backwards for me because of cameras. It's very, it's very odd. And so we're going to talk about uh, multiplying by negative 1. So what does multiplying by negative 1 do? So multiplying by negative 1 <coughs> flips everything over. So let's do that again. Boom! It flips everything over. You see my hand, my one hand has gone toward negative 1. My negative 1 hand has gone to where 1 was. And that's what we've got. We flip the entire number line over. In fact, we could imagine the number line fly, flipping over 180 degrees. And that's going to be very important to us, because now we're ready to talk about the square root of negative 1, which is i. And we've just seen what multiplying by negative 1 does. It, it takes everything and t flips it over. So we have this. So let's get our number line out again. Here's our 1. Here's our negative 1. And we're doing this movement. Now, if we were to multiply by i twice, we'd have the same movement. This is multiplying by i twice. This is multiplying by negative 1. i times i is negative 1. So somehow, multiplying by a single i is that movement broken up into two equal, equally equivalent pieces. And so we're trying to. We're trying to show that, trying to figure that out. So I often have my students just continually doing this. How can we break this movement down into two equally pieces? And generally, your dance student, who's ever in dance, who's ever had to do any choreography, some eventually goes, well, we could do this. And then we finish it off. Go up to here. And then we finish it off. OK, and I say, that's great. That's perfect. Um, that's just right. Uh, because what are we seeing there? That Well, here was 1, and I'm about to multiply everything by i. OK, so where was 1? Oh, here's 1. 
I'm going to mul multiply everything by i, and when I do that, I get this. So here's i. This is down here is negative 1 times i, so this is negative i. And we see that multiplying by i twists everything 90 degrees. And that's an important way to understand what i does. And that's an important way to understand what i is. So i is sitting there above 0. And negative i sitting there below 0. And so when I add i, what happens? Well, everything moves up. And when I subtract i, what happens? Well, everything moves down. And when I multiply i four times, what happens? Well, multiply by i once, multiply by i twice, multiply by i again, multiply by i a fourth time. Oh, you're back to where you started. i to the fourth power is 1. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with this. Uh, as, as a little ender here, I'll, I'll have you think about the square root of i. What would the square root of i be? So uh, I want to thank you for your attention, and I uh, hope this is helpful to you. Bye.